This is a Brunch pre oscars mini podcast. It contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care. If you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers, there is no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. Dude. Unnecessary. Unless you're going to spoil something, I don't know if I could spoil this movie. Yeah, I don't think you. I don't think you can. It's a. Uh, it's also like a well-known existing piece of work that has already been made. So I think a lot of the people who are interested in Dune or have or want to see Dune probably already have seen Dune and already know how it goes. But here's the thing. I have seen Dune and I'm saying I cannot spoil it because I don't know what happens. I f- okay. I feel bad doing this. I don't want to cheat people out of their time, out of their Patreon bucks. I'm really hoping you're bringing some Dune takes on this one yeah. because don't not going for a laugh, not trying to get a laugh. Don't want anyone to have the worst day at their job. But this movie just really isn't for me. Wasn't going to be for me. I knew 40 minutes into it, I was like, I'm just not going to get any of this. They're freaking out over spice. And yeah, give me a, give me your best synopsis of what Dune is. Okay. Jesus. Um, Dune is a uh, 2021 American epic science fiction film directed by Darius Villanueva. Dennis. Uh, D- Denny? Yeah. Is it Denny? I don't know. John Spates and Eric Roth. It's the first of no, two. No, don't read it. Just give me like off the top of your head what, what you think Dune is. Busted. I was reading that. <laughs> Uh, Dune is a movie set in the future. Mm -hmm. Timothy Chalamet plays a boy who can't lift the water with his mind. And his mother's really dogging him about it. She's like, lift the water with your mind. Just keep practicing. Lift the water with your mind. Can't do it. Everyone's freaking out about spice. And him, his family is like, we got to protect the spice. Can't If these other... If these other folks get their hands on the spice, it's not going to be good for the old universe. And I was like, so it's worse Black Panther. And they were like, so it's worse Black Panther. And Oscar Isaac is like, look, kid, you're not ready. You can't even lift the water with your mind. He's not trying to lift the water with his mind. He isn't? He's trying to uh, use the voice to command somebody to give him the water. This is in the future, and they don't have fucking Siri. That's right. He's no, it's, it's essentially like a Jedi mind trick where like you can. I knew it was gonna yeah. be something like that. Where you like convince somebody that they have to do something, or like you use the voice to force them to do it, basically. So it's the future, and Timothy Chalamet's eyes don't work. Just fucking bat them, bro. <laughs> They'll do whatever you want. It's true. Uh, Timothy Chalamet in this movie. This is still a synopsis. Is uh, so much skinnier than everybody else. And it's distracting when he stands near anybody because he's such a skinny little boy. I'm not trying to body shame him, but everybody, they're not going to listen to him. They're not going to give him the water. They're like, yo, can we give you some milk? Maybe. Yeah, I was going to say, Why he's, don't you tell us he's to a bit emaciated some pasta? Because, yeah, because he, uh, he can't convince anybody to give him food. 88 cents at Stop and Shop, bro. Pasta, pasta. Can we get you some pasta? So everyone wants the spice and they got to protect the spice. And then... They fly in ships, and some people die, and you use their... It seems like the movie for a, a, such a big-budget movie kind of cheaped out. It spent $165 million. They didn't have anybody like really kill each other. They just did everything with their mind. It was like a lot of like, oh, no, I'm imagining somebody getting stabbed. And then they cut to a person and it's like, oh, I've been stabbed. I'm dead now. And I was what like, what kind of weird there, play is this? There's a lot of like actual violence. If I don't know what movie you watched. Stellan Skarsgård is the most disgusting. Is made to be very ugly. <laughs> yes, that, that's where I was like, okay, I was going to do the. I, knew I you were tried going to be personally and I didn't offended get a thing. By what but they now did. you're fucking with me. It, that's a it's a real like look how they massacred my boy. <laughs> oh, yes, a hundred percent. I mean. I was thinking, and again, this movie, for all I know, is good. I it is. It, it, by the way, I I really like okay. this movie. Could not be less for me. Yeah, I really like it. Okay, so I mean, then I will very very happily just give you the floor, unless because otherwise this is just going to be me like 
su- suggesting ideas on how else they could have used this incredible cast and all that money. So I, I I should preface this by saying that I am not like a Dune person. I knew nothing about Dune on, whatsoever, whatsoever. And uh, when we were going through it, or when I saw it for the first time, I did have a lot of like the same experience. I would say, like I think less less aversion to it, less initial aversion. But I was confused as to like what was happening uh, through the first first watch through. I was like, oh, this is very complicated, and I'm not sure I completely understand what's happening here. Um, but it's it moves pretty quickly. Like y- you criticizing it for how uh, how long it is. I rewatched it this week, and I definitely think that I liked it more on rewatch because I had like baseline knowledge of what to expect, and I think that that definitely helps. But rewatching it. It moves through the axe pretty quickly, dude. I called customer support after like an hour and ten minutes and was like, "Yo, are you gonna? Are you doing any? Are we doing anything here? Are you gonna give me a movie or just a that's, lot of? They want nuts. the spice. We can't let them have the spice. Move the water with your eyes. We can't have the. I guess like the the pace is a little snappy, but I was like, get on the ships. Don't stand around the ships and be like, we can't come. You can't come on the ship. We have to get on the ship. Get on. Then go. Just take whoever you're gonna take." The spice is just fucking waiting there or something. Go protect the spice. Talk a big game. I think that, that like, you're right in a way, but That's I... That's horrifying that what I just said was right. But you... I don't think that you enjoyed... You were waiting for something to happen because you weren't invested and you didn't care about the story at that point. Guilty. 100%. And once you have that baseline knowledge and you go in... You're much more interested, or at least I was much more interested in the beginning parts rather than just waiting for them to go to the new planet. Hmm. Uh, this has a score from Hans Zimmer. This is uh, the uh, the big dogs came out this year on the old score front. Mm-hmm. Johnny Greenwood on Power of the Dog, Hans Zimmer on this one. So they're going to be duking it up. This movie is awesome from a visual standpoint. Yes. You have to, you have to say yes. it. Yes, yeah. And it's up for best visual effects. It's up for eight Oscars: best picture, visual effects, cinematography, original score, adapted screenplay, costume design, makeup and hairstyle, and film editing. I can give it visual effects, definitely. I can give it score. I think it's gonna probably gonna win score. It's like a heavy favorite, yeah. but I think that's just like, yo, did Hans Zimmer do something cool? He wins. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, film editing maybe. Sure. Uh, again, I'm disappointed that that Belfast wasn't nominated for Best Cinematography because that – if you have a takeaway of like, wow, that looked magnificent, I think that's like, okay, well, then that's I think Dune's more impressive than Belfast, cinematography-wise. It cheated. It used colors. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a choice on Belfast's part. They didn't need to. The the opening uh the opening scene of Belfast is in color and it looks amazing and the play scene that's right and, and the uh, movies chitty chitty bang yeah. bang so it's a intentional choice of Belfast maybe they uh they fucked themselves a little bit uh, I think Dune looked amazing I think that like all the uh the costume design was awesome um yeah just from like almost like anything from a technical standpoint it was pretty good this film has a another member of the Two Film Club. Thinking Two. We talked about how Kate Blanchett is in Nightmare Alley and Don't Look Up. How Ron Perlman is also in both those movies. Uh, Bradley Cooper, of course, is in Licorice Pizza and Nightmare Alley. Tiffany Chalamet is in this and Don't Look Up. So it's for something in the main episode next week. We'll do something on the uh, the Two Film Club for this year because it's a it's an interesting group. You mm-hmm. got. No offense to Ron Perlman. The guy's a legend. But it's like three of the heaviest hitters. And I'm like Ron Perlman. I tried to like put together a graphic of the four of them like looking really intimidating. And I couldn't find a picture of Ron Perlman doing anything but being like, well, you're taking a picture. <laughs> like him like walking down a red really? carpet. He's being, the like, hardest startled. one to look intimidating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he just doesn't do anything serious. He's just like, huh? What? Ron Perlman. That's wild, because uh, my first exposure to Ron Perlman was uh, was Sons of Anarchy, in which he plays, like, the most intimidating character. Oh, no, he always plays, like, the fuck. We don't want like that a, guy a there. Hard ass, yeah. Yeah. Ron Perlman, man. He's not in this movie, though. But he's, like, the only person he that wasn't been. in this movie. Yeah. 
loaded ass cast. You got your Chalamet, you got your Isaac, you got your Bex Ferguson, Josh Brolin, Stellan Skarsgård, although you wouldn't know it. Jason Momoa. Uh, Stephen McKinley Henderson. Mm-hmm. Lady Bird guy. Mm-hmm. Although, shouldn't call him Lady Bird guy. He's in a bunch <laughs> of stuff. Zendaya is Michi in this one. That's right. Uh, who else? Dave Batista, Jason Momoa. Javier Bardem. Who, did you mention, um, what's her name? Rebecca uh, Ferguson. Rebecca Ferguson. Yeah. Who I did not know was married to Simon Pegg. Whoa, I didn't know that either. Yeah. It, uh, what a what an awesome uh, British couple. Wait, really? I'm seeing. I'm not seeing that on. Uh, let's see. I believe so. Yeah, you got duped, man. What? You got duped. That's not true. Uh, she is. Since 2016, she has been in a relationship with a man called Rory. Says what Wikipedia. The heck? That's the sentence Wikipedia wrote. Hold on. Wait a, a second. Man here. called Rory. So it was a. Someone across the pond wrote that sentence. <laughs> Hold on. Give me a second here. Okay. Her name's uh, Rebecca Louisa Ferguson Sundstrom. She's from Stockholm, which is uh, in Sweden. Her alma mater is Adolf Frederick's Music School. She works as an actress. I mean, that's an that's a Instagram official right there. Are you kidding me? What? You took that to mean that that's like a relationship? It says this couple, how I love this couple. And they've got I several. I said this man. No, but uh, in the comments. And then uh, here's February 14th. Happy birth- birthday to my Valentine, Sir Simon Pegg. Always better when you're around. Well, then why is Wikipedia saying since 2016 she. Okay, let's look this up. I am I am very confident that I have okay, but that was very presumptuous. If if you were just going no, off but, of no, like but I had a seen of them. I, it's several pictures on her Instagram. It wasn't just like one picture. Yeah, uh, no, let's see, twenty twenty one. No big deal. Just Simon Pegg, Rebecca Ferguson, and more hang out on Mission Impossible Seven set because uh, 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 yeah, along with uh, let's see, another example. Simon Pegg shared is. I mean, just Simon Pegg. I mean, from everything I'm reading, they October, made a movie together. October 26, 2021, she posted a picture from uh, Mission Impossible, and Simon Pegg commented and said, Bay with a heart. Let's see. I just don't think that if you're dating somebody else that you post a picture with Simon Pegg and say, uh, Happy Valentine's Day, Simon Pegg. Well, I mean... <laughs> Simon Pegg is what is what does it say when you go to Simon Pegg's Wikipedia page? Yeah, that he's married to somebody else? Yes. I'm What's happening here? Really promising you that like I you you're finding th- like, like if this you is, were I have find, evidence. You, you're, you, so you don't have evidence. But I have like I have You have things that would lead you to that. So if you just if you just saw those things outside of the rest of the world, you'd of course think okay, they must be in a relationship. Yes. But uh they are definitely not. <laughs> That that is what that is what? weird. Why is that why Valentine's is that Day is um that's the one that's really rattling me. Is Simon? Let's see. Is Simon Pegg? I hate to do this, but is it? No, yeah. Simon Pegg's spouse is Maureen McCann. I was going to say it would be possible, maybe if like they weren't both heterosexual, yeah. that maybe it could be that like they're like, oh, love you, Bay, and I don't know. He's yeah, maybe they, they're just like maybe people just like ship them and they're fucking with people on Instagram. That could be. I mean, they got you. Yeah, they Hook, sure did. And yeah, absolutely. Poo. Absolutely. Good for you, Rebecca. You. All right. So congratulations to Dune. I uh, can't wait to see. Uh, dude, do you, you, you can't nominate the next Dune for an Academy Award. Why there's going to be more of these, right? Yeah. So but th- so that might be my biggest complaint about this movie is that it is like essentially a setup movie it's you know it is the first of uh of a pair uh and i think that it's a good movie in itself it's a setup so you're saying that this is a fucking episode of the walking dead where we're like oh it's okay this one isn't that good it must mean the next one's gonna be good that's not what at all what I'm saying because this movie well, is good. Pete, I can't trust the thing you say. You think that Simon Pegg and fucking <laughs> Fuck uh, off. Rebecca No, Ferguson I, I are think in that this is a very good movie. I just have a hard time um 
I I don't know. Like there's something that, like a part of me that feels weird about giving uh, best picture consideration to a movie that doesn't tell a whole story. I agree with that. That's fair. But I I wonder if I would feel differently. Like I don't know. Like it just feels weird. It feels weird. Where does this rank for you generally? Like it, it, how many how many tiers in your in your mind? You don't have to say how many there are. I'm a big tears guy. How many tiers would you say you have for the movies this year? Would you break it into three, four? Probably four. Okay. Would this be in your third or fourth, I'm guessing? Probably third. Uh, like upper third. Okay. So middle of the pack I think for it's you. middle of the pack, but I think that it's a it's a an awesome movie and and like I'm very excited about the second part. Like I, I think that once we get Dune Part Two. I'm going to look on the Dune franchise and be like, Dune franchise fucking rocks. I'm not ready to say it yet because we haven't seen the whole story. Maybe I'll study up. I'll, I'll just keep watching Dune. I, like re- I really times, do think that and then it, I'll really get everything in Dune. I really think that if you time, get but... past like the wall of resistance that you have, yeah. you're going to really enjoy it because you did admit like from a technical standpoint, it's awesome. Yeah, it looks good. And... Once you open yourself up to the story, I think that you're going to be more receptive to it. But again, like th- this is by no means like there are foods that I don't like that I know everybody else likes. Therefore, those are good foods. So if everybody else who's into this type of movie that generally doesn't do it for me says this is great, then I'm like, cool. It goes over my head the way that. Other things go over other people's heads. This this movie was never going to connect with me, but maybe I'll try. Maybe I'll try to connect with it. Probably not. But you tried for like two months, and it just took you two months to even watch it. Yeah. Well, we're, we have time. The Oscars aren't for another like we 